our kids how to tie their shoes or how to write their name, but we might overlook a key skill, being able to communicate. Studio 5 relationship coach Matt Townsend says parents aren't teaching their children basic communication skills. Why not? Why aren't they teaching these skills? Because we're clueless. We don't know how to do it. The parents don't know themselves? The parents don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it with the child because kids communicate differently than adults. Men and women, we're all different. We don't know how to do this. Now, they don't know how to communicate or they don't know how to teach kids how to communicate? Yes, oh. I would say mm -hmm. both. Absolutely. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. think about your most difficult child. Like, my wife's always like, why don't our boys talk more? And I'm like, well, they're boys. <laughs> and they don't want to talk, so get off their back. <laughs> but part of it's just we're different. And to, then to teach them, it's just, it's hard. So I, I found that if there's just a few basic principles that if you could start instilling in their heart, in their head, when it comes to communicating to another person, you only need to teach them the idea and then start modeling it and then point it out when they've done it. Hmm. It's easy. Four steps, it's called getting real. Okay? It's my favorite thing to teach because this is the number one thing I teach couples to help them save their marriage, literally, is to how to be real in your communication. So here they are. Get Real's four steps. And the very first step is to recognize, not react to the emotion of others. Have you ever noticed somebody was angry and then it made you angry? It or off somebody like was distant and then you started you started worrying about it we've got to learn to not rec to recognize it and not react to the emotion which means if mom's mad I shouldn't react to you if you're mad you shouldn't react to Timmy if Timmy's mad we don't react instead we just start recognizing someone's emotion it's powerful that's easier said than done if someone gets yeah. mad and they're all getting into this whirlwind of madness yeah. you get sucked in and you oh, actually absolutely. you react to that too well then imagine so that's one thing is a bunch of kids doing that I can't necessarily expect them not to react but as the mother as I walk in the mother yeah nice. um, as the parent <laughs> as I walk in I might say whoa 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 you guys are angry okay that's me recognizing their emotion and I'm holding it up now it sounds weird but what do you feel when somebody gets what you're feeling that has a name that like people are dying for in this I like world. I call it validation mm -hmm. sometimes. I don't we want to be validated. Okay. So if I walk in and my wife seems sad and I say, you seem sad. That's just me recognizing her emotion. It's not me going quiet because I think she's mad at me. That would be me reacting to my wife. So when I see my kids are sad, I might say, hey guys, you seem sad. Hey Tanner, you seem frustrated. Hey Britton, you seem a little bummed. And now watch that. If I state it like that, just recognizing it to him, what do you think he'll do? What will someone do once they're validated? I think they open up. They talk more. Do you know what I like, too, is you didn't follow up with a how come uh -huh. or what can I do, but sitting That's in that right. silence, I would imagine, yep. would prompt, especially a teenager, uh -huh. to feel that silence. Exactly. And what's so powerful is that I'm telling you, no matter what, I will always get your emotion. I will always get it. I can get it if you're mad, sad, scared, embarrassed. I'll get it. And when I hold it up and you get that I get it, that builds trust. When we just ask questions like, what's wrong with you? That obviously shows we don't get it. Mm -hmm. By the way, even if we get it, stating it is more important. And it makes them defensive when mm -hmm. they say what's wrong with you or yeah. why or something. Then you feel like you have to explain it. Whether mm -hmm. you, just, you just know that someone's validating That's you. it. That's the, not, that's the hardest one to do. But that's the one we get where we get people starting to share. And that's the hardest one to teach your kids. The best way to teach your children that one is just to model it. By the way, if they seem happy, guess what I'd say? You seem happy. Tell me about your day. And then they'll start to tell. What's the sense. E in the real? E stands for explore their stories, not your stories. Mm -hmm. Behind everyone's painful un or frustrating emotion is a story. There's always a story. The emotion's just the, pr the precursor. The story is behind it. So we use the emotion to tell us that there's a story. And instead of exploring mine um, and stealing your turn, I'm going to explore your story. You seem really happy. Tell me about why you're so happy. And I'll guarantee you that, well, we went to wherever, and we went and we started playing on the water slides, and it was so much fun. Now watch. Oh, wow. I, went, I did that once, and we were swimming on the water slides, <laughs> and I hit my head on the thing, and it hurt so bad. So I just stole your story. One of the keys to helping somebody communicate is letting people tell their story. And as they tell their story, especially if they're emotional, they lower their own emotion. You let them dissipate out the emotion simply by telling the story. You don't, you don't hate the story, you don't agree with the story, you don't disagree with the story, you just let the story out. You're really good about getting into people's mm -hmm. stories. I just learned a little relationship trick that you've been playing See, on us all along, right? You're really good right. about getting into people's stories and continuing mm -hmm. to explore their experience. Why? 
Why would I do that? It gives me power. <laughs> it gives me power to know your story because then I know how to work with you. I know what's important with you and by you talking, you lower your own emo emotion while you increase my understanding. So the goal of being real is letting you be real with your story, mm -hmm. me not jumping on it and reacting to it and I let uh, the understanding go up while the emotion goes down. And if we do that, it builds trust. Then, here's the next thing. Then the A stands for attend to their starved stuff or the real source of their pain. Behind a story, there's a real source of what the real pain is. So if, some, if your kid's fighting about, so John stole my, he stole my uh, bat. And I hate it when he steals my bat because every time he steals my bat, he goes and hits rocks with it. And you can't hit rocks with bats. Dad told me, you can't hit rocks with bats. So he's telling the story. As he tells the story, he's lowering his emotion. But there's something inside the story that's starving him, I call it. Remember? That's my book. Um, starve are seven needs that need to be met. Safety, trust, appreciation, respect, validation, encouragement, and dedication. When the, his brother steals his bat... It's not the bat that's the issue. There's one of those needs that aren't being met. He may feel unsafe because his brother's breaking his toys. He may feel disrespected because dad says you have to do it this way and you're not obeying dad. He may feel discouraged or invalidated. So there's always a deeper need. So if you don't get caught up in the story, but you look for the deeper need, that's the emotional core to this whole thing. And if you can get down to the emotional core, then you can, let, you can solve the problem. Mm. That's why most people end up saying, we talk a lot, but we never seem to solve the problem because it keeps coming up over and over and over. It's because you're probably never down to the real issue, the real emotional issue that causes all the fire. The starved stuff that's down there. Okay. That's true. Last but not least, lift the conversation. This is the most important thing you can tell anybody about a conversation. Every conversation, we get to choose which direction it goes. We can choose if it goes up or down, forward or backward. Up meaning positive, down meaning negative. We can take it forward forward into the future and solutions, or we can take it to the past where we just kind of keep harping on the past. One of the most powerful things to teach your children is every conversation you get to choose which way we take it. I can tell you the most offensive thing right to your face and you can still lift it. You can still try to understand my side. You can admit if you blew it and made a mistake. You know what? I totally agree. I was hitting rocks with your bat and I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was hurting you that much and I promise I won't do it anymore. That's a lift where he could have said, well, you, you hit my, my whatever, you hit my friend with the bat. And now we argue about the bat and the friend, and we argue about all this other stuff, which isn't the issue. And now we're into a case of abuse. And now we've got the but I like it. I like it, that root issue, and then lifting the conversation yeah. to a more positive direction. Every argument you'll ever have has a root issue. A root emotional issue. You can fight all the smoke all day long, but mm -hmm. if you don't get to the fire, you're just going to keep burning places down. Are these conversations, the teaching communication, is it harder to do with children than it is with adults, or do you have to do anything different I when think, you're teaching children? Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's probably harder to teach them because they don't have the conceptual knowledge, but I think it's easier to do with them. You go recognize your son's emotion. Tommy, you seem sad. He will open right up. Teenagers gets a little harder. Adults gets even harder mm -hmm. to get them to actually open up because they're smart enough to know what's going on. So to model this stuff is easier with children. To uh, actually verbally teach it and conceptualize it is harder. You mentioned your book. We got to hit your book. Yeah, Starve Stuff. Great book. Go to Deseret Book. It's a great book. It really is a good little resource. It changes your life. It changes your life, and you have a special date night coming. This up. date night is the date night of all date nights because I teach you how to get out of the smoke down to the fire, and then I teach you the seven basic needs. So coming up June twenty second, Friday, understanding your partner's needs. For Studio 5 viewers, you get a $25, dis, uh, $25 instead of $35. $10 off if you go to Date Nights with Matt and enter the Studio 5 coupon code entry. You're in. Bring your friends, your date, your neighbors, and your children. These Thanks, fill up fast, so register today. Okay, still.